everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the very first time you're welcome and it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera, we're British early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money-saving life here in Brittany in northwest France and every Friday we bring you something food related and this week we're going to talk about a pantry challenge and how it saves money, reduce waste. Something we thrifty people do, and I know many of you do this because you share this with us, is just like us, you build up a decent pantry, a decent store in your home. You, like us, you're only buying your meat, aren't you? When you can see it reduced at the end of the day, you pop it in the freezer, or like us, like you as well, because like I said, you share this with us, you buy it when it's on sale. I only ever buy meat ever if it's on sale. And so what I do is I will buy it, and I will buy as much as we need. So if our chicken breasts are on sale, I might go and buy 12 to 16 chicken breasts and put them in two in each bag and pop them into the freezer. There is only the two of us. You've got a bigger family, you probably buy a lot more than we do. But it comes to anything anything that's on sale. So whether it's legs of lamb, lamb chops, beef for casseroles, it's sausages, whatever it is, I only buy it on sale. So I've always got a really good stock in my freezer. When it comes to tinned goods as well, I'm looking for, you buy two, you get one free, or at the moment we buy four, we get two free. You can see where I'm going with this, can't you? I never ever just breeze into a supermarket and pick things up full price. So whenever I'm shopping, and I know you do this too, we are buying more and we're stocking it up. But then it does come to a point when the pantry is full the larder is full, the freezer's full, the fridge freezer's full, the pantry cupboards are full. And then it comes to the point when you can say, there's no sales on at the moment, definitely not gonna be needing to buying any more for a while. Now, maybe for you, because it certainly is for us, it's a really good time to do a pantry challenge. talk about what is a pantry challenge. It's when you decide, or as we've decided, we're sharing with you, and I know lots of you do this as well, you decide that this is the time you're going to eat down the freezer, you're going to eat down the frozen veg, you're going to eat down the home canned goods, you're going to eat down all the fruit that you froze last year, you're going to eat down the jam and preserves and the pickles that you made last year because it's coming up to the next gardening season again, isn't it? You're going to eat down all of those bags of rice and pasta and all those tinned goods maybe that you've really stocked up on because you, like us, have reached a point where you only shop the sales and you've got plenty of something. It's also a time when you stop shopping for those items. I'm not gonna be buying any more legs of lamb. I'm not gonna be buying any more chicken. I'm not going to be buying any more sausages. There are things that I can say I've absolutely got enough of it. So the pantry challenge is when you decide what you're going to eat down, for how long you're going to do it. For us, I know many of you do this too, it's a month. So April for us is a pantry challenge month where there's lots of items that we won't be buying and we'll just be eating from our pantry. Because at the end of the day, that's why we have a pantry, isn't it? We stock it up when it is on a good price, when it's a deal, when it's on sale, so we can eat it down when it isn't. Let's share with you some of the reasons why we thrifty and frugal people like to have these pantry challenges. And we have them, not just for one month, some of us have them like we do, for a few months throughout the year. I'd say about three or four months of the year are very much pantry challenge months. And here's the first reason. There are sales cycles. So at the beginning of the year, this is a non-food item, we had lots of cleaning products and laundry products on sale. So we've stocked up on those for the year. 
don't need to buy them for the rest of the year. Then there was a cycle where lots of pork was on offer and I bought a lot of sausages and put those in the freezer. I know people who buy the cheapest cuts of meat and make their own sausages at this time of the year. Then there's lots of things that come up on offer. This time of year it's chicken and it is lamb and there are sales cycles and then for maybe two or three months they will peak prices, they will peak, the prices will go up and up and you know because I know you do it too, we thrifty people are not buying it then. If minced beef, ground steak, isn't on sale, I'm not buying it. Chicken's not on sale, I am not buying it. The legs of lamb that I bought, I paid 17 or 17 euros for what, 18, 17, 18 euros for them. They will shoot up in price to 30 euros each. That is when I do not buy them. So, why do we have these pantry challenges? Because we have shopped the sales, there are sales seasons, there are sales cycles. And that means we've really stocked up on things. And now when there are no sales, when there are no offers, this is the time that we go through our pantry eating what we've got because we're not buying anything else. Now I know that you thrifty, frugal and money saving people out there just like me absolutely can't stand waste. It's the worst thing to do isn't it to waste food. You might as well just take your money outside and set fire to it or literally cast it into the wind if we are wasting food. And a pantry challenge is a really good thing because first of all you've got to do a very in-depth stock check and I have gone through all of my cupboards and I have literally brought the things to the front that I need to use up soon. I'd forgotten I'd had lots of instant mashed potato that I keep and I always have a few of them in there, not particularly because we're great fans of instant mashed potato but I add them to other things and also they're really good to have on hand when you just feel you know a bit tired, you're not very well, it's one of those quick and easy things but I noticed they are of the end of their date. And some things like tins food, ah, you could keep it another year, but dried foods like instant mashed potato, not so much. So to avoid waste, what I have done as part of my pantry challenge is I've gone through all of my cupboards and everything that's nearer to this month's date. So anything that needs eating up in April, May or June, I've put it to the front of the cupboard and put it to the front of my mind. And something else that I've done to avoid waste as I've gone through everything in my cupboard and everything in my freezer that is open. So the frozen fruit, the bags are open. That needs to go on my meal plans. The frozen vegetables, they're open. They need to go on my meal plans. Frozen vegetables, they can get freezer burn if we are not careful. All the goods that are open. So I've got lots of things like beans and lentils, I've got lots of black beans, I've got loads of the big white beans, I can't remember what they're called in English, but they're big white beans, and I make sort of bean pâtés or bean burgers with them. And because they're open, I've opened the bags, I've decanted them into jars, those are things that I've literally put at the front of the pantry shelf, and I'm incorporating those into my meal planning. So it's very much an important thing for us all to do. And like I said, I know us thrifty and frugal people really hate waste, but having that pantry challenge and using these things up, make sure that nothing gets left in there too long, nothing spoils and we don't waste it. Another reason that I like to do a pantry challenge, as well as it saves me money, as well as it avoids waste, is it really reminds me, reminds us of food that we may have liked six months ago that we've really lost the taste for now. And there are items over the winter that we might like that we don't like into the summer months and therefore we want to get them eaten up by then. I have got far too many chickpeas, kidney beans, lentils, all of those type of dried goods in my cupboard. Our tastes as a couple have changed. We're eating lighter meals. We're eating less carbs. We're eating less rice. We're eating less pasta. We're at that time of our lives where our metabolism is slowing down. We're just not so hungry. So all of those items now that we need to eat down, 
And then I need to remind myself that in the future, not to stock up so much of these things. I'll always buy some. I'm always going to want to eat black bean burgers. I'm always going to want to eat refried beans. I'm always going to want to have some kidney beans to put in my chili, but not so much. So whereas I used to go out before and think, well, it's a really good offer and I can buy three bags for the price of two. What I might do next time is buy three bags for the price of two, but pass the one bag on to a friend who I also know will eat them. So they're not just sitting there and I don't feel compelled in any way to eat foods that I bought that I really liked in the past, that I'm not so keen on now. So there's another really good reason for doing a pantry challenge, is to look at your changing tastes, your, your changing dietary needs, like us getting older, not so hungry, not wanting so many carbs in our diet, and then educate myself, because I'm the person who does the pantry challenges, to think to myself, I don't need so much of those in the future. that we have done pantry challenges in the past. They are a fantastic way of saving some money quickly. You know when you need to just get like a hundred euros together or a 200 euros together, something really quick, something's come up with the children at school, something that has just slipped your mind or slipped my mind and especially in the past when I wasn't so good at budgeting, is that it's good if you've got a pantry because when you need that money, the food is there. And that's again why we have those pantries, isn't it? We have that supply of food in case money is short. We have that supply of food in case we need to divert some money somewhere else. We've all done this, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not just me. I'm sure everyone out there has said, I'm going to need to, the children have gone through a pair of shoes. I mean, literally, I bought them shoes in September. It's October and they've got a growing spurt, I haven't had the money to save up their new pair of school shoes. And the pair of school shoes, let's face it, can cost £75, if not more, for a pair of good leather school shoes that they have to wear in a British school, and you've suddenly got to find that money absolutely out of nowhere. And many of us have done it, haven't we? We've used our supermarket money, we've used our groceries money to, to mop up that cost and we've eaten down the pantry. We've, we've made our own bread. We've got the margarine out the back of the fridge that we didn't really like very much, but we've made biscuits with it. We've made cookies with it. We've baked more. We've made homemade pastry. We've made homemade pies. We've taken the corned beef out of the cupboard and used it with tinned potatoes and tinned corned beef to make a corned beef hash. We've all done it. I know I'm not the only one. I know people share this all of the time. When money is short, it is a great thing to do a pantry challenge. It frees up that little bit of money, especially when there is more month than there is money. And it is a good thing. And again, it's why we have a well-stocked pantry. Another way of using a pantry challenge to save money is if you're someone, and I know many of you do, who eat out on a weekly basis. If you go somewhere once a week, and here in France, if we went out to eat once a week, and we had a three course meal for our lunchtime and a cup of coffee, it would be 20 euros each, so 40 euros a month. By not doing that for a month, puts 160 euros in our pocket. That's a hypothetical 160 euros because we very seldom go out and eat at all. On average, about three to four times a year. So that's another way of doing the pantry challenge and say, well, we're not gonna buy any more food. We're gonna eat what we have at home. We're gonna eat that down and we're gonna put that into our savings. When you add that, that 160, to 100 euros that you would save by doing the pantry challenge. And then you can see how those savings can really start to add up on those pantry challenge months. Some people set themselves a target of saving an extra 500 euros a year or an extra thousand euros a year by doing these savings challenges. 
and they put that money towards something that they really want, that's really important to them. Maybe they want to go away on a week's trip somewhere and that is more important to them. So having those pantry challenges could mean you don't go out and eat once a week or if you go out twice a week and you save one day a week and you use what you have at home and you're eating down what you have at home, it's another great way of seeing your savings grow. Let's talk now about pantry challenge target setting. And I'm gonna share my targets with you. My first thing that I want to do is for us to eat everything that's already open. If I've got any packets of rice, packets of beans, anything at all like that in the cupboard, packets of pasta that are open, those are the things that we're going to incorporate into our meal plans over the next few weeks. Anything I have in the freezer that is open, so that's fruit, that's vegetables, those are going straight into the meal plan. Anything that I batch cooked previously, so are things I've got in the freezer. I've got cottage pies in the freezer. I've got lasagnas in the freezer. I've got moussakas in the freezer. Those are going into the meal plan as well. Those are part of the pantry challenge. I'm then looking at the things that I canned last year. I canned a lot of apples. I also canned a lot of tomatoes, but we've eaten all of those. And pickles, we've eaten those as well. But we've got lots of apples. So I'm gonna incorporate those so we're going to be having some apple crumbles and apple pies and eating those down this month as well. So I'm going to look for those recipes that I can use to use those beans and pulses. Now we have a meat one day, no meat the next day type meal plan. That's the way we work it here. So I'm also going to so incorporate those pulses in, the pastas in, but I'm also going to take some of those beans, some of those chickpeas, and I'm going to batch cook them because they're much easier for me to use if I can just pop them straight into something. Now I don't have a pressure canner, so I won't be canning those. And we know it's the safest thing to do is to pressure can pulses and beans. But what you can do, and I've had this on very reliable sources and from research, is that I can cook a great big pot of chickpeas, for example, and then I can bag them and freeze them. And so that makes it easier for me just to pull them out of the freezer and pop them into a dish. So there's something I'm going, so I'm going to be doing is using up everything that's open and batch cooking some of those beans and pulses and chickpeas so I can use them far more quickly and easily. talking a pantry challenge month what I personally will be buying or what I won't be buying. So in this month I'm going to continue to buy fresh fruit and vegetables. I'm going to continue to buy milk. Our UHT long life milk shelf stable milk here lasts about one to two months and I just do not have enough room to store that much of it. So I will continue to do that. I will continue to buy bread and I will continue to buy butter. Although butter is something I only buy when it is on sale. And if it's not on sale, I buy the least I can get away with. But what I will do with the money that I have spared this month by not buying the food items is I will be looking for gaps. Gaps in the things that we need at the moment and we are really low on toiletries. We are really, really low on bathroom tissue. We are really low on some certain cleaning products. So I will be stocking up on those. If shower gel or soap is on offer, I will stock up on those. Shampoo, hair conditioner, those type of things. Those will be the things, antiperspirants, that's another thing as well. If those are on offer, this month, those are the things that I will stock up on. And I've already done some of that already. And I know when one store has a good offer, at the moment it's on toiletries, another store will quickly follow along behind that. So with the money that I save, this month, what I'll be doing is plugging the gaps of all the other things, all the non-food items that we're short of. <laughs> A 
As I often say in these videos, I do like to be reflective. So to share with you, we're going to be eating down the supplies that we've got, that we bought when they were on sale, when they were a really good price. We're gonna be using the money that we saved this month to stock up on non-food items when we see them on sale or at a really good price. We thank you everyone for watching this video today. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And I'm gonna hand this straight over to you. Do you do a pantry challenge? Do you have a time of the year when you have food that is on sale, that's really good prices that you stock up on, and then future months when there aren't such good sales that you eat it down? Share with us. We love to read your comments and we know that you all love to read the comments as well. Thanks everyone again, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>